But one trend that I see quite a bit is that some of the smartest people in life are not the highest earners. And some of your richer people, the people who generally do a bit better in terms of financial means, there are different measures of life of course, but the people who do a bit better from a money standpoint may not always be that intelligent. They may not be anything above average. Now, why is that? Why is that trend the case? And I think a lot of you guys, if you look to your social circles or people that you know, can probably talk about one case where this is true. Some of the richer people are not always the cleverest. What is it though that drives this weird disparity? Well, I think the first thing to understand is the different opportunities that arise for different people. Be it wrongly or rightly, people who are seen as smart are given better academic opportunities. And it's definitely the case that this influences what someone can do within the means of the traditional system. You know, if you have zero qualifications, it's unlikely that you're going to have much of a potential of getting a high paying job straight away or something like that. So I think this is what drives the initial divide. Because whether it be in the modern day or even traditionally, there's only so far that you can go in the world of employment. I think most people understand that a lot of millionaires and especially billionaires are self-made. And how do you do something like this? It's in the world of business. The thing is, when you work for someone else and when you have a traditionally smart mind, your life can become comfortable quite quickly. You know, you could be age 23 and land a good graduate job. From there you could work your way up because you're very smart and you'll probably be a, you know, upper manager or something equivalent in your field. Now because of that, there's less of an incentive for you to do something outside of, outside of what you already do. Because you've been granted and given, whether it be through your skills or just by luck, you've been given all these opportunities, which mean that you don't need to try with a business. It seems to be the case that as humans, we are inherently lazy and understandably so. But a consequence of that is we don't generally want to do work that we don't need to. Who would and why would you? If your life is comfortable, you're not going to be as pushed to try extra. Now that is of course one view, but let's look at the second one. The people who may not have the same skill set and abilities in a traditional sense. People who fall under this category have got less of a chance of getting a high paying job, especially from the outset, for obvious reasons. They've got less of a chance of making it in the system as is right now. And these sorts of people, just because they didn't do well in school or university or college, that doesn't mean that they're ambitionless people or driveless people or goalless people. A lot of the smartest and most well-rounded people that I've ever met have never had a degree, have never been to university, or some of them even don't even have A-levels. Whilst a lot of people who do not have degrees are smart, a lot are not. And it doesn't mean that everybody who doesn't have a degree is a genius. But I think this is similar to a situation that I found myself in about six months ago. I'm a third year university student as of now and you eventually get to a point of realisation as someone with a basic degree from a basic university with basic qualifications outside of that there's only so much you can achieve coming out of that degree when you go into the jobs market and subsequently I had two decisions number one try my best with the degree see where I end up and of course I still aim to do that because I've got my last set of assignments to do but option number two was to acknowledge that the system is fundamentally flawed and it works on these qualifications rather than your actual genuine skill set and as those of you who've been watching for some time now will know I went for option two for me there's no choice but to try and subsequently in the past 12 months or so, a lot's happened. 
I've built up my dropshipping business to a point where it's, I'd say, semi-successful. I've created this YouTube channel. Amongst other things, which I am currently working on and will be working on going forwards. The question is, though, would I have done this if it was less of a necessity? If I could have landed that high-paying job, would that have been what I did? Well, there definitely would have been less of an incentive to try because you're already doing all right, you know? And when you're already doing all right, you double down. If you think you're doing well at something, you double down on it. So for me, if I'm doing well at drop shipping, I'm gonna list more items every day. If I was doing well at work, I'd do more work every day. And in most fields, you get to a point of diminishing returns. You can only work so hard and achieve so much to get more money. It's just not possible to get past a certain point. You know, some people might refer to an entrepreneur as someone who makes their own money. I'd personally refer to it as someone who solves a problem. And the two things can, and usually do, coincide. But the problem that you're solving for a lot of the time is, well, quite frankly, your lack of ability to find high-skilled employment. And if you've got the intelligence, this can be actually, despite what people may say, your biggest strength. I think most people who go down the, fact, the path of earning for themselves, or being an entrepreneur, as we say, or anything like that, they get to a point where, you know, they start to do it, they start to see results, and they realize a lot of what they've been told is completely not the case. Like this idea that I think a lot of people have, you know, an entrepreneur is someone who's amazing, super smart, someone who's super intelligent, knows about everything, and that's how they make their money. It's not true or it doesn't have to be true. In some markets, it definitely does. But if we're talking less about the market and more about just the results, if you're out to make a lot of money, you need roundabout average intelligence, no better. And again, this idea that people need to be super smart, I think it comes from a place of people see how few people are rich and think these people must be very clever. What it does take, though, is an element of risk. And generally, people don't like to risk things where they don't need to. And why would they? If life's comfortable, you don't take risks. You don't chase your dreams for a lot of people because you don't need to. When life's a bit more difficult, and when you have that, in a way, trouble starting off, you've got no other options and it's just a lack of choice which generally for most people it means that you have to do something right if you don't know what to do that's fine but the right answer is always to do something and that is what I think at least drives entrepreneurialism a desire to create change you know different experiences and different lives create different understandings so some people may disagree with me, but I don't think it's that hard to make a lot of money. And again, usually the smartest people seem to make the best employees. I think another thing to consider is running a business is difficult. Running a business takes a lot of skill. It comes with a lot of challenges. Something which you may think the smartest people would be best equipped to cope with. But due to their vast intelligence, I think... A lot of people look at the risk associated and they think it's not worth it because they can calculate the risk a lot better. This was a chat that I had with a friend the other day about running the sort of businesses that I run. And this person was talking to me about, well, what if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? What if this doesn't work out? These are mostly hurdles that I've already passed, so it's not really a concern. But for a lot of these things, my genuine, honest answer was, well, I've not actually thought about that. And that might sound like, well, I'm an idiot. And maybe I am, but what? A consequence of not thinking about it has been is that I started the business and some things I did come into hurdles with I did run over hurdles with some things I didn't understand some things I don't understand but I started the business I gave it a go right I tried something I think 
that's the difference. If you have to do things and you want to do things, you will do things. Is it more challenging? Yes. Is it more rewarding? It can be. In terms of running their own business, I think that's why people with average intelligence, people with average intelligence have just as much potential, if not more, to make the same amount than smarter people or very smart people. Neither's wrong. Both comes with their own advantages and disadvantages. And either can do well. But if you're around my age, say 20s, or even if you're in your teenage years, next time that teacher says, or next time someone that you know says, you can't do well because of this, this and this, well, it's not explicitly true. That's all I'd say on the matter, and that's really it for this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it if you can, if the message was useful to you. That's it for today, as the sun is going down, I'm going to make my way home, and again, I hope this video was of some value. Thank you, see you again.